Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced. The best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. All right. Hello, everybody out there. It is another day in this time of isolation and quarantine. Uh, every single day I feel like is, uh, you know, we're waking up and everybody's looking at each other and wondering, are we doing this again? Wherever you may be listening to this or finding this or coming to this uh, quarantine chat, I hope you are safe and well. Every day I'm trying to start my day with a spirit of gratitude uh, to make sure that my mindset is thinking about how am I going to navigate myself uh, through this, what's within my control my thoughts every single day are with the people out there who are suffering right now in the world, the people that are sick, unfortunately, and certainly with the, the frontline folks who are serving those uh, that are in need uh, right now in the world. This is, you know, these are disorienting times, no doubt about it, for individuals, uh, for leaders, for teams, for organizations, for families, for communities. And so uh, the purpose of these quarantine chats is to just check in and to connect with people around the world, with people that, that I want to touch base with, again, friends and voices out there that I admire and appreciate in terms of uh, navigating this with our mindset, with leadership, with culture, and thinking about those kind of things. So today, I'm excited to invite into the quarantine chat a friend, Gina Malakon long uh, Hello from Whistler, Canada. Hi there, everybody. How are you? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. Great. How are you? I'm well. So Gina is a uh, is an author, the co-founder of Greatness You, which we'll talk about here in, in just a second, I'm sure. Uh, a mommy, a wife, a uh, all around wonderful person. Uh, we've had the, the pleasure to speak at a number of different global leadership conferences at the same time around the world. I think I was trying to remember this today, but I think uh, Bahrain was one of them. Yes. Uh, were you in Were you in Panama? Did you do that one? No. No. Okay. Not not Panama, but Thailand. Thailand. Yes. I know for sure. Yeah, we were both there for that one. Uh, so those global leadership conferences for entrepreneurs organization, getting a chance to speak, uh, and that's how you and I crossed paths. So, how you doing? How you navigating your way through this quarantine? Oh, isolation? fantastic! Isn't it Isn't it funny that directly after we re record this, I have a conference call with a chapter in Bahrain. I just think that's funny. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So um, I'm great. I mean, it's very rare. In fact, I would offer never in your life that you get the opportunity each day to adapt to, to adapt your day with very little um, changing. So you're able to really track how much of your day is impacted by the choices that you make because nothing else is changing. So I just want to offer that perspective. Um, it, it, you know, it's like the movie Groundhog Day. You get to get up, try everything again. Nope, that didn't work. And then the next day, you get to get up and change something. But you can trace whether it made a difference or not right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and I believe that the mindset that we have every single day, how are we navigate our way through this and, and, and what gets our attention every day, you know, that's, I mean, that's life in general, but that's that, how we get through this is, is pretty important. I want to just, I want to jump on a word that you just used there. So you said, what gets our attention here? Here's what I'm going to offer. Instead of letting things get your attention, um, perhaps you could say, uh, people could consider is what is you, are you giving your attention to? Yeah. Because, um, you know, I've been, I, I've been teaching a lot uh, and right now, you know, the, the truth is you can't control circumstances. By the way, you never could. Okay. So this okay. is just perhaps a baseball bat version of the teaching that you can't control the circumstances around you. Um, and that goes for always and ever. And so that's true, no matter what crisis is helping me make my point. Um, but then the only thing you can control, and I know you share the same perspective is your, is yourself. That's and right. is your, I'm going to use your word, is your mindset. 
then then I've been teaching a lot about well, so what the hell does that mean, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. I've been broadcasting every day, and I'm I'm you know up until this crisis, I would not have classified myself as a social media user, much less good at it. Um, but I've been broadcasting every day because it's allowing me to reach people who are asking for help. Like, how do I do that? Great. So I get that the circumstances can't be controlled, and I need to control myself. But what does that mean? And the big thing that I focus on is your focus. Mm -hmm. And I could get into it, and I do in some of my videos, so maybe people can just go watch that in lieu of a full teaching. But you basically have a limited bandwidth of focus each second. And what you give your focus to dictates how you can behave, like Mm -hmm. what you could possibly choose to do in that moment. And I try, you know, I tried this analogy of a budget, Um, you know, all the research shows it's 126 bits a second. So you get 126 bits a second to give or pay attention to something, pay attention. That's why I went with the budget metaphor. And (laughs) well done. And if you aren't in control of dictating where that goes, then someone else is. And so someone's got your attention, not because you chose to give it to them, but because you chose not to focus your own attention. And so therefore, it's by default, you give it away. Yeah, no, I love that. One one of the phrases that I talk a lot about is where you look is where you go. Right. And so what you choose to give your focus to, what you choose, you know, there's a, there's a metaphor, an analogy when you learn to surf or when you learn to ride a motorcycle, when you go through the training for those kind of things. I've, I've, been, I've been told this for elite downhill skiers. That they well, I was going to say, I'm Canadian, mogul skiers, 100%. That's right. That's right. So, you know, that, that where you look is where you go. And so that, there's, that, there's that powerful moment of, well, what is it? And what I love what, what you're saying is the choice of, of what am I giving my eyes to? And, and I believe that uh, certainly, as you just said a minute ago, is crisis is only revealing that to us even more, that that's always been the case. And yet in times of challenge and obstacle, that it's revealing that even more uh, pr- uh, pronounced to us right now is that what we give our focus and our attention to, that's where we go. And for some people, again, we can get trapped in that negative thinking where we look, we can get pulled into blame and complaining. And yes, but see, I still think that's a choice. You know, like I work with Maybe. thousands of people all over the world and, and they'll say to me, well, I, I need to be informed. Okay, well, perhaps you do. And, and you know, I don't want to discount the fact that, that people need to make decisions and they need data for their decisions. So for your business or your family or whatever, but over and above that, if you are consuming information that ha- pulls your focus away from what you want, then, then there's no service in that. And sure, is that discipline? Yes. Is it, is it, is it, you know, more um, dramatic to tune into every news report, every stupid thing, every whatever? Of course, but you get 126 bits a second. And so you don't get more. And so if you really want to get what you want, and let's say what you want, Let's just say, like, like, forget about goals and cars. And let's just say that when you wake up today, what you want is some peace and quiet. Let's say that that's what you really want. Well, then you have to be at cause for choosing to create the chance of that happening. No doubt. And part of that means, you know, I read a great article. I live in a very small town. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have a newspaper, but it's like certainly not the New York Times. Um, and You're in you know, I, Canada. I, Right. And, and I honestly pick it up every day or well, every week. It's a weekly thing. And I pick it up every week for two reasons. One, there's a coupon in it for my local grocery store. So I take that might as well. It's money printed on the paper. And two, um, we have a wood burning fireplace that heats our house. And so we need the paper, right? Yes, and yeah. I read it. You know, there's great articles sometimes, but in the middle of a pandemic, I'm not picking it up to read the articles because I have no interest. I have no, I have no uh, budget for that. Yeah. However, I flip to the back page because I love the guy who writes on the back page. And his title of his article, this is a journalist, said, um, blow up your TV and throw out your newspaper. <laughs> And I thought, all right, I'll read that because, yeah. because you know what, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much going to agree with, with what he said. And he's like, look, I write for a newspaper, but 
you don't need any more proof. You, you know, so so the article was wasn't about the crisis. It was about the impact the media has on us, which I thought was very valuable. Sure, it was more relevant during the crisis because he had a, an audience for it. And and what I've noticed now, this is a weekly paper again. Right. So after the initial brouhaha and all the reporting, we've gone back to, you know, spring recipes and right. because, well, because that's what people want to read now in, mm-hmm. from that paper. Yep. Um, but what I will say to people is, you know, you don't need, first of all, you d- absolutely do not need the television running 24 seven. Right. You know, well, and, and you never have, you know, we, we never have. And again, uh, in the midst of crisis and, and, and challenge and, and, and drama in the world that sometimes we feel like there's the fear of missing out that somehow people will leave it running on because I'm going to miss something. But the reality is we have the information that we need. And if you feel like you don't, then you, you'll go seek it out. But to, to be, I love the idea of the budget because if you budgeting and saying, all right, well, what am I giving? Am I, Am, am I giving too much of my focus and my time to that? And in my language, again, where, where we look is where we go. So if I'm giving too much of my time, then I'm getting pulled in a direction. And this is where I, I hear you saying is getting pulled in a direction that I don't really want to go, but I'm allowing somebody else to pull me there. And then, uh, again, my language is then from that moment is we are setting a temperature for other people. So we are a thermostat for ourselves, but also for the people around us. And so for my kids, if that's where I'm being pulled, then whether I know it or I'm conscious of it or not, I'm setting that temperature for everybody around me too. And I'm probably sharing that fear, that doubt, that the anxiety that's happening in that drama. And so I love that idea that we have to be able to to be mindful of, well, what are we giving? What are we investing in what for that budget that we have what do we pay attention that's right you you are receiving you're a receiver you read the news you watch the whatever you you receive it by your five senses but you're also a transmitter so to your point especially if you're in an environment where there are other people um very close to you or if you're a leader and you impact people you are also a broadcaster and it doesn't have to be the words coming out of your mouth although it could be the words coming out of your mouth and so this is um, like a key point, and, and language is extremely important right now. So I love to do this little exercise with people. Um, so you do it, and people who are listening, everybody participate, takes 10 seconds. So what happens to you when I say, don't think of a blue tree? I think of a blue tree. Immediately. <laughs> That's right. Now, I said don't, because my intention was I wanted you to avoid that. Right. But what we don't realize, what most people don't realize, and this is the, you know, the basis of my training, is mechanistically, our mind doesn't process the word don't in the way that we intend it to. So all it does is take what comes after don't, and it makes it a command. Yep. Now, obviously, thinking of a blue tree and not thinking of a blue tree, you know, it's, it's really not a, a a long-standing command, but nevertheless, a blue tree pops into your mind, guaranteed. That's right. Now, think about things like um, "don't be so negative" or "or don't forget your homework." Okay, notice how, and then you wonder why your your teenager keeps forgetting their homework. Yeah. So, in the work that I do, we always say that one of the biggest rules is say it the way you want it not the way you don't want it. That's right. Po- positive reinforcement rather well, than it's positive. But I, I, again, I, I stay away from the judgment for me. It's focus on what you want versus focusing on what you don't want. Now mm-hmm. these sure what you want is generally what we would classify positive and what you don't want is generally what we would classify negative. But the, the difference in the linguistics of it means because people th- think and this is the big mistake that because the words that come out of their mouth might be positive, might sound positively. Okay. Sound like from an emotional sense. Well, they come out, they come out. No, no, no. It's not emotional. In fact, it's not, it's intellectual. It comes out sounding good. Okay. Okay. But truly they're focused on what they don't want. 
right? Yeah. So, so here's a great example. Let's get out of all of this. Let's get out of it. You know, New Year's Day, you may have even seen me do this, but somebody might say something like, oh, this year, I really want to be fit, <laughs> right? That sounds good. It sounds healthy. It's like, I don't know, a lot of people would be like, wow, well, go Gina. In my world, if you get into it with that person and understand where it came from, actually what they're doing is they're cloaking, I want to be fit, over top of a focus, which is called, in their, in their bedroom and the door's closed, called, I don't want to be fat anymore. Mm. <laughs> and the focus on not being fat, yeah. nobody, it's not politically correct to yeah. say that. Yeah. Okay? So at least we know that our focus is on what we don't want, but then we cloak it in these words and we give ourselves this illusion. Mm -hmm. Like we're focused on what we want, but we're not. Now people yeah. go, what the hell? How am I supposed to know if my words are betraying me? Right. How am I supposed to know? Now it comes back to what you said, which is the emotional state will always indicate the true focus. And it's super easy. And I'm going to use your words. When we are in an emotional state, we would call positive. So, you know, joy, peace, love, gratitude, whatever, mm -hmm. then we can be confident we are focused on what we want. When we are, find ourselves in an emotional state, we would classify as negative, anger, frustration, worry, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can be certain that we are focused on what we do not want. Doesn't matter if we're pretending, it doesn't matter if we're pretending our focus, our, our budget, the attention we are paying is going to what we don't want. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take your uh, analogy and say we go where we are looking. Where we look is where we go. Yep. Where we look is where we go. Where the hell do you think we're going to go That's if right. we're pretending to focus on what we want, but we're really focusing on what we don't want? We're mm -hmm. going to the bad place. Get it? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, so I say, so emotional guidance system is something that I, that is the foundation of a lot of my teaching because the emotions aren't good, bad, right or wrong. They're, 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 they're not inherently, they don't inherently have meaning. They just are. Yep. They have names. Feelings aren't right or wrong. They just are. Yeah. Absolutely. They just are. Yep. They are a guidance system though. And yep. they will always, they will never lie to you. They will always alert you. So you're going along, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden you find yourself in a negative emotional state. That's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like your focus. Hey, Gina, you, you lost consciousness. You, you gave your attention to something. You, you didn't do it consciously. You just yep. let it happen. Yep. So I'm bringing you back to remind you how it works. And then your job as the person who's at cause goes, oh, thanks, negative emotion. <laughs> That's right. That's that's the recalibrating of the thermostat. That's saying, oh, wait, wait, I'm setting a temperature that I don't want, and I'm experiencing a temperature that I don't want. And so, uh, if I have clarity, if from a, a, a if I if I'm doing the work of intentionally thinking about, well, what is who is it that I want to be in the world? What is that temperature that I hope to set? If I have an understanding as a leader or within my team or my organization that this is the temperature that I'm trying to set, if I have that, then I'm able to use the those tools to be able to say, okay, I, these are, these are signals that I need to recalibrate break that thermostat. I love that. And it's so, it, and in fact, some language that I use around that is, is I say language drives behavior. And so oh, to be, no question to be, to be uh, so in the culture shaping world, the words that we use and certainly the behaviors that follow, we, we have to be really thoughtful about are, is the language connected to the experience we're trying to create for ourselves? Don't think of a blue tree, man. That's right. Right. Like I, you know, when I'm, I, and I teach this now I teach as you know, or maybe you don't know some of the mechanistic models that I teach. So, yeah. so my approach is very linear and mechanical because my background is engineering as you may or may yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Um, and, and, but my work is all in, in human performance, right? Uh -huh, so the, right. the performance of, of people getting what they want and my why is to reveal greatness. And, yep. and even just that phrase, you know, people are like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. That took me like six months and a lot of money to, to really capture what I was trying to say. But in the phrase, the two words, I tried to get it to one, but it, it, we settled the two is the, the phrase reveal greatness implies what? You're gonna, you, it, 
the the reveal. You're going to you're going to bring something uh extraordinary into the world. But it's already there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Reveal means like think means about like you know, you're taking the oh, sheet, you're you're pulling the sheet off me. You're, yeah. You're, you're, yeah, you're, uh, you're uncovering. And and that's really important because the people that I work with, so whether it's it's the companies that I work with, the the, the coaches that I teach or even the individual clients that I take, all the work is designed to reveal what's there. Right. What, what, what people need to get is you don't need anything. You already have everything you need. But what you've done is you've, you've kind of, you know, and, 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 and not because it, you're, you're doing it on purpose or it's wrong. It's just, you know, uh, you know, as we grow up through our lives, we build strategies and mechanisms for coping with what's happening to us and sometimes we just put up big barriers or blockages or whatever and so um your job is to take down those obstacles when they when you hit them with your head and they don't work for you anymore right i think rumi said um you don't need to seek for love you need to seek for the barriers you've put up against it yeah yeah you are love yeah that's right Right. So I've been talking about this on my, on my daily broadcast. And you can see it, you can see it behind me, by the way. I mean, all you know, I know that's why I said right? it because it got my attention. You, you see, go. you see how impactful that was. So I have this screensaver that I've had since before I met you. So it says the light at the tunnel is not an illusion. The tunnel is mm. right. Mm. And so this is a really profound thing to understand. And we, at varying degrees, we have barriers. Now, what a crisis does, especially this particular crisis, as I said in the beginning, it removes all the variables right now. There are very few variables, yep. right? So right now, it's super simple. Like, two months ago, it was not simple. Like, then we might be having, well, what should we, what should we let take our attention to? You know, should we watch that show or this show or <laughs> read this or read that? You know, now it's like black and white. So let me, let me, let me spell it out for you. If when you consume it, your emotional state is what you want, then keep consuming it. And if when you consume it, it's not, then don't. So here's where I'm at, just to share from my life. We're watching Friends reruns. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah. what I watch it, I laugh. Yeah. I'm practicing my, you know, memory skills because I've seen it 60,000 times, but also it was from a time a long time ago. So there's no reference whatsoever. And it's just funny and stupid and reminds me of a simpler time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when I'm consuming, people are like, God, that seems so, you know, you, you can't be on 24 seven. So that, you know, it's funny, haha, it's good for downtime, but then I can show up in my family and my resources haven't been depleted by something that doesn't matter to me. Mm. Because many of your listeners, I'm sure, yep. have to deal with their career slash work slash whatever situations going on professionally. So they either have a business and they have to reinvent it, or they've lost a job and they have to figure out, or they have to wait, or they're, they're in a job and they're actually um, 100% more busy because they're in an industry that has been ramped up. And so, and nobody has the tools they need to do it. So they're trying to deal with that. At the same time, everyone's got to be now a school teacher, if you have school age children, and perhaps a nanny or a babysitter if you have young children. And then you have to deal with these idiosyncrasies in any partner you might happen to have. You also have to become a house cleaner, a dog groomer, a hairdresser. Well, maybe not you, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, there are all these things that we took for granted that we have to kind of do. And we're supposed to be operating our peak capacity. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. No, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And, and that's what I mean. These are disorienting times because, and, and again, we always have things that are circling in our lives, but right now, we're being asked to get out of those normal routines and habits that we've once experienced and, and come to understand and, and come to believe in and also come to trust and actually count on every day. And what now when those, you know, you know, we rely on them. Absolutely. And then now with so much spinning and all those things that you just eloquently, you know, identified, especially my hair, I mean, I got to take care of this thing. But, uh, you know, when you start worrying about all that, there's only so much and I, I come back to, there's only so Attention. much bandwidth, there's only so much budget that yeah. that I have I'll I'll just personalize it there's only so much budget I have and so it, part of what I um you know I, I return to and I think about a quote from Plato Plato who said what is honored will be cultivated 
And so from the budget standpoint to, to, to bring this language together, what I think about is so, so with all these things spinning around me, what is it that I'm going to honor and what am I going to invest in? Right. And, and to realize that if I, I can't be the greatest father in the world, the greatest husband, the greatest, you know, author, speaker, consultant, you know, person who's trying to serve and engage minds and hearts of people in the world to be the best friend, to be the best hairstylist, to be the best house cleaner, to, to be the best groomer for my pets. You know, you know, I can't be the best at all of those. And so every day we do have to make little barters, you know, and we have to budget. And, and, and uh, for me, at least, again, personalizing it, uh, it's an exercise every day of saying, what is it I'm going to honor? Because that, in the end, is what's going to be cultivated. What am I going to focus on? Yeah, where we, where I look and is where I go. Exactly. You have a budget. I want to do two things because I want to give your listeners a gift for you having the, the smartness to uh, connect with other people. I'm going to have tons of free resources because people need stuff. I'm not selling anything. Just so yeah, we're clear. Yeah, of course. Right? Um, greatnessyou.com slash virtual. There's, there's a free copy of my book, for a free seven-day course. All Everything's free. There's no charge for anything. Quotes, um, reports, just anything that I thought would help anyone right now or people have asked me for right now is the time to give help the other thing I want to do if you if you'll indulge me is a quick technique I'd love to teach a quick technique I'm going to use you as the guinea pig but this is for the greater good of the people listening a quick technique that eliminates worry and I think worry is a prevalent emotion that people sink into unknowingly or anxiety. Some people say I have lots of anxieties, right? I'm anxious about this, worried about that. So this technique that I want to teach takes about 45 seconds, but it'll allow you to eliminate worry because it will, it, it will um, illuminate it as a form of focus. So worry or anxiety is, a, is, a, is fear, but it's fear of the future. Yep. So it's a specific, specific type. It's not just general fear, right? Right, right? So fear of the future. So immediately we have to think we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So right out of the gate, somebody who does the work that I do goes, hold on a second. You're not, a, you're not able to predict the future, right? If you did, everybody would have a lottery ticket. We'd all be, you know, That's right. we'd all be already there. So therefore, if it's fear of the future and it's not working for you, by the way, it has to be not working for you then you can stop it because it's technically, remember what I said about negative emotions, right? It's the guidance system. So I have this little acronym I call SNAP. Stop, notice what it's called, alter it, and then proceed. So then go where yep. you're going, yep. right? Yep, where so you want to go. I, exactly. So I'd like to teach an altering technique that eliminates worry. So do you have something, Jason, that you're just mildly worried about? Like, could be whether or not the kids are going back to school or, you know, something. Like, it doesn't have to be something you're massively attached to. Just, you know, something. Could you share that with me? Yeah, 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 sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, uh, you know, again, uh, mildly worried. Uh, Mild. worried. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've, been, I've had a great desire to, my wife Amy and I have wanted to take our kids internationally uh, on a next experience that we want to provide for them and that we have uh, right. wanted. That's been really important to me in my life and I want to make sure at different stages in their life. So we, we were beginning the stages of planning a trip for this summer that we were about to go do this. And now all of this certainly has thrown that. And so there's a, I would say there's a mile just worry of, oh shoot, this was a window we had planned. Right. Are we going to miss this opportunity? Those kind of things. Is that, is that, does that work? Does that work for you? A hundred percent. So you just, you need a specific thing. So the technique doesn't work in a generalized context. Yeah. So you need a specific thing. And just as a side note, um, well, I'll talk about that later. Okay. So here, so now here's what you need to do. First of all, you have to want to be free of the worry. Are you, you have complete desire and then you have to be willing to kind of follow this little process that I'm going to uh, illustrate for you. Is that cool? I like it. So desire and willingness. Great. Okay. So could you imagine if I said, you know, your life, your life's kind of like a, a film strip, right? So uh, the parts of the film that have already run, that's the past. And the parts of your life that are still to come, that's the, in the film that's still in the canister ready to, you know, so it's kind of like a film strip. You yeah. get that? Yeah. And, and film strips are like lines. Okay. So your life is like a line. Is that fair? 
Got now, it. quickly, if you adopt this paradigm quickly, that line is usually organized relative to you. So quickly, if I were to ask you, where's your past? Just could you point? Can I, could you show me? Great. And where's your future? See how that's a line? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, what I'd like you to do, and this will allow you to let go of worry. So I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine your life as a line, a film strip line that kind of lays itself out. Then imagine your Superman or Superwoman, whichever you prefer, and float up above the line. So now you're looking down on it. So you've got a different perspective. Good. Now, I want you to go to this exact place. Float above the line out into the future. Okay, float out into the future over the line. But now go to 15 minutes past the successful completion of the event you were worried about. So go out to 15 minutes beyond the successful completion of the event you were worried about. Rotate your body and notice how the worry disappears. Is it gone? Mm, yeah. Good. Now stay up there. Hold on. Because yeah, this is the beautiful yeah. part. So it, it disappears, right? Yeah. Good. Now, with the disappeared worry, stay up there, float back above the line, and come back into the line where you are in your studio, in your microphone with the sign, all you need is love behind you. And then, let me know how you're feeling now. Yeah, I, I feel good. You, you, worry you, worry yeah. is the most, worry is the most immediate service that our focus has changed. And it's, and it's like, so our focus could change so subtly and worry is the early warning indicator. So it's actually the most useful negative emotion if you use it and the most harmful negative emotion if you let it run. Because what it essentially is saying is you're focused on what you don't want, you're focused on what you don't want, you're focused on what you want. Now, which of your analogies do you want to use? What happens to the skier who focuses on the moguls? That's right. <laughs> Right? That's right? So now here's the thing. And a lot of people will say this and perhaps you will too. Well, what do I do if it happens again? We'll just do it again. Do it again. Rinse How was it for you? It's pretty remarkable, right? Ab absolutely. No, absolutely. And it's, uh, that's where, uh, again, you and I are aligned in this, in, in this, this is the, this is the training of, of the mind. And this is the training of our experience being alive and awakened in the world that we all have negative emotions and thoughts and doubts and fears and worries and things that creep into our lives. But it's the returning back to it's, it's part of that revealing maybe that you talk about is, is like, hold on. Well, let me, I can always, let me re imagine and bring my focus back to where I want to go. And, um, and that's a, that's a practice. That's a, that's a, that's a building of that muscle. Wax on. What? Wax on. <laughs> that's right. right. So, yeah. So anyways, people can, can try that. And, you know, um, there are only a few components. You have to want to be free of the worry and you have to be willing to do it exactly as I said, which means you have to be able to imagine it completing successfully. Once you do that, worry has to stop you're now focused on it completing successfully which is what you want yep. and then you come back to now and if you have to do that 100 times an hour because it's the it's the training like you said it's wax on wax off then you're gonna have to do that until you can consciously pay attention to what you want i love it i love it gina every time i i chat with you i'm always uh i, I get a smile because i feel like i learned something i feel like i'm also it reinforces a lot of the things that that i talk about and that i teach and that and and, and i just appreciate uh the work that you're doing in the world so it's always great to uh to hear your voice and to to and to stop and to uh invest my budget into thinking and trying to hear where you are and how you're thinking about things. It, that adds values to people's lives. So uh, even though we're in the time of quarantine and isolation, uh, it's great to see your face in Whistler, Canada from afar. And yes. uh, great to share this. So I hope everybody out there will check out Gina. Say, say the website again, Gina. Uh, greatness U, the letter, greatness, the letter U.com slash virtual. Slash virtual. Awesome. Uh, well, what I'll also say is this is phenomenal. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to spread positivity, to, pre to, to spread care, to spread leadership, uh, and to, to maybe challenge all of us to think about what, what are we giving that budget to of our focus every single day. 
in the midst of a, not only crisis and obstacles and challenges, but at, for every single day, what, I, what is it that we're honoring? Because where we look is where we go. And uh, that is no doubt about it, that where we look is where we go. So I hope that anybody out there listening, I hope this has add, added value and contributed to your day. I hope you will help us by amplifying positive and uh, uplifting and help return people's focus maybe to whatever it is that you want uh, uh, for today. And uh, wherever this finds you, we hope this finds you safe and healthy and your loved ones uh, cared for. I hope you'll continue to check back in at, at Jason V. Barger on all social media platforms at Jason V. Barger. So I hope this met you where you are today. And uh, Gina, once again, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. And let's go focus on what we want and then feed the field. I love it. Be well. You too. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to your organization, or you have a question or comment about this podcast, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we all are ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of, The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.